Hey everyone, it's Maury. Today we're going to talk about um, external computer storage. I'll keep it kind of high level. Uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about the technical specifics of the drives or the interfaces that we're talking about today. And then we'll also do an unboxing and assembly of a drive that I purchased for use on my laptop. Um, as a uh, video creator, oh, and there's Amazon with my package. Um, as a video creator, I tend to create files with you know large file sizes. And while my MacBook has a terabyte of storage built in, it's also nice and um, a good idea to have external storage as well to be able to offload some of those files, archive them, things like that. So I'll kind of go over some of the options, some of the things that I use, and then um, what I'm unboxing today to show you, and, uh, and then how it performs. So let's get started. Okay, so we'll start with this. This is an external uh, two and a half inch physical drive, uh, mechanical drive based storage device. This one has a terabyte of space. And the uh, advantage to something like this is low cost and high storage. So uh, a very affordable you know, per gigabyte cost versus some of the other options. This has a USB 3.0 interface with a type A connector. Um, you may also know it as a super speed connector. It's the flat the flat connector with the blue insert, if you can see it there, the blue indicates that it's the super speed um, 3.0 interface. Uh, the 3.0, that particular and this particular drive, um, operate at the 5 gigabit cap for that interface. So it's decently quick, it's much faster than some of the older. Um, USB drives that you may have used. It's not as fast as they can get, and we'll talk about some of that in a minute. Um, but again, the advantage here is low cost, high storage, high density um, for offloading files or archiving things, doing backups, stuff like that. So it, uh, you know, this particular drive, like I said, has a mechanical hard drive inside. So that's the limiting factor for this interface. This is a five gigabit interface, but the drive can't keep up with that speed. So any transfer rates from this drive are being limited by the hard drive itself. Now you can get a drive like this with an SSD inside, and that will substantially increase the performance, both read and write. You're still limited by the five gigabit interface, but it will perform better if it's a flash drive inside rather than a mechanical drive. You may also be familiar with USB flash drives. Um, this particular one is interesting because it has two different interfaces on it. They're both USB 3.0 um, spec, so they're still operating at that five gigabit cap. But on one side is the USB uh, A connector that I showed you with the flat connector. But the other side has a USB-C connector on it, which makes it really handy for transferring files from, say, my MacBook uh, Pro 17-inch, which does not have USB-C. It has this style. and But transferring files between it and my new MacBook Pro. Or this interface will also plug into the bottom of my uh, iPad Pro for transferring files. I uh, typically just use these for shuttling files around or in the case of traveling I'll put movies on them so that I can um, you know watch movies on the iPad or on a TV or something like that. These are a little more expensive per gigabyte than the uh, Toshiba that we were looking at just a minute ago. Um, this one is a 256 gigabyte storage capacity. Um, it will operate Generally, these are not known for being speed demons. This is more for convenience sake and portability. So it's a nice option to have, and I generally at least have one of these around so that in a pinch I can transfer files between different machines or you know what have you. But uh, they're, they're handy to have and they're pocketable. I have a lanyard on this one so I can 
carry it around and hang it on stuff. But um, I take this up to the cabin with me. I've got a couple hundred movies on here and um, you know, I'll have something to watch while I'm at the cabin. Today's exercise is to assemble this. Now this is part one of two. This is an external enclosure. It's operating at USB 3.1 spec, uh, Gen 2, at 10 gigabits transfer rate. Um, this has the USB-C connector, but it operates at the higher speed. Uh, my MacBook has the Thunderbolt 3 interface, which is capable of reaching 40 gigabits, but the enclosures and hard drives that reach um, that speed are much more expensive. This was a kind of a middle of the road option for me for storage that's faster because it's at least twice as fast as the uh, other typical USB 3.0 super speed drives, but it's uh, much more convenient. And I actually was able to choose the drive that goes into this, which we have here. Now, I'm not going to go into the specifics. If you have any questions about the interfaces or the technical specifications of this stuff, leave them in the comments below and I can answer it down there. I'm not going to get into NVMe or um, or any specifics about the, the interface itself. Um, but this is a crucial, by Micron, uh, one terabyte uh, solid state drive using the NVMe M2 standard. So it's capable of running at uh, the 10 gigabit per second transfer rate that the interface on this is. And again, um, this will exceed the performance of this enclosure. If this were inside a computer uh, using the PCIe uh, direct interface, it would operate at a much faster transfer rate. But for the sake of this, um, I wanted to save a little money. These two things together cost about $130. 135 maybe. The uh, This particular uh, enclosure, I haven't seen any reviews on, so that's the other reason I wanted to film this. Um, this ran, it was on sale on Amazon. I got $10 off, so I think it was $39. And then the terabyte SSD, I think I paid $95 for. So whatever the math is for that, $135 or 140 I guess. But, but anyway, so this together will operate uh, much quicker than the mechanical hard drive that I have. Now it is possible to buy this as just an external drive already assembled from a manufacturer. Uh, most of those don't operate quite as fast as this one should and you don't really save any money. The drives that are in this spec, you know, terabyte with the uh, USB 3.1 interface they typically run $120 to $140 for something decent or, or more expensive. And then to go to something that's capable of reaching Thunderbolt 3 speeds at the 40 gigabits, um, you're talking several hundred dollars. So this is a nice balance between cost and performance. So first we'll go ahead and open this up. Now this just arrived, so I haven't even looked at it yet. Um, it's going to be very small. So here's the enclosure itself plastic off. Now this is nice because it is aluminum and it has these built-in fins for cooling. NVMe drives, the one that you're going to see, tend to run uh, very hot. So it's important to get something. You'll see that it has vent holes as well. It's important to get something that is going to keep it as cool as possible and vent it uh, if possible. Now just to compare it in size to the mechanical drive that we were looking at earlier. Now this is a terabyte. This is also going to be a terabyte. And you can see that there's a very large space savings. It's much more portable, pocketable for that matter. This kit comes with a cord for USB-C and also an adapter to plug it into a USB-A port. Um, in case you're running it on uh, an older laptop or a, or a laptop that doesn't have a USB-C port. Now, it will be limited by the interface. So again, if you plug this into the USB-A port using this plug, the one that I showed you earlier. So if I plug this device in using this connector, then 
it's again being limited by the interface speed, so it will run at 5 gigabits, not 10 gigabits, which is still plenty fast for most stuff. But if you're transferring extremely large files, then you obviously want to plug it in to um, you know something that's as fast as possible. So here's the enclosure itself. We'll get this out of the way and clean things up a little bit. Uh, the kit comes with the standard cable, so this plugs into the device like that. And then it has an adapter to plug it into the uh, USB-C port. I actually have my own cable too. This is a little bit clunky uh, in my opinion, but um, the cable is nice and so I'll probably still use it. But I have my own USB-C cables as well that I may just use instead of using the adapter on it because I mean, I'm sure it's fine. I just, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of this, but you know. The kit also comes with a screwdriver for opening it. You can see the screws right here on the end. And now we can open the drive itself. So again, this is a terabyte NVMe M.2 uh, SSD. You'll notice how very tiny it is. So these are very tiny, very fast. Now, this particular drive was kind of a balance between, again, cost and performance. It's not the highest duty cycle drive you can get, but it does carry the same five-year warranty that everything else does. Now, because I'm not using this in a computer, it's not going to have an extremely high amount of reads and writes. Being in external storage, that lower duty cycle is okay for this, uh, for this application. If you were putting this into a computer, you would want something, I mean, this again, this would be fine, but having something with a higher duty cycle capable of more reads and writes is probably a better option. But for what we're doing here, this is going to work just fine. Okay, so we are removing the front case. We'll pop this off here. And then this just slides out. So here's the board that it sits in. It just has the interface on it, and this is where the drive plugs in. And then it attaches to the board using a screw, which is stuck to my watch band. All right, so you'll see here that it has the notch that just fits in like that. And I don't know if you can see it because of the focus, but this is the mounting um, pad or pin for the screw to keep this in place. So we will push this into place, it just kind of snaps in, and then I believe this goes like this. So you see how it kind of fits in the end of the drive there. And um, it's capable of taking other size drives as well, but we have the full size one here. So that goes in there like that. All right, so that secures the drive itself into place. Um, it holds the end of it down and uh, it's secured into the connector there. We'll make sure this is nice and snug. So we talked about how these drives run hot. And because of that, this also comes with a thermal pad and it just attaches to the top of the drive there. Um, there's nothing fancy about it. It's self-adhesive. Remove the cover from that, and then it just slides back into the device. Like so. 
and then we can put the cover back on and then the two screws that we removed to secure it in place so um, now that this is assembled I will grab my laptop and give you some benchmarks and show you just why something like this is uh, such an improvement over the mechanical drive that we saw here. Now again, you're not getting the storage for the money as I throw my tools around. So this was a terabyte and all said and done it cost about $135. This is a terabyte, and I think now these are probably 40 or 50 bucks, maybe. Um, you can get two or four terabytes, in some cases, uh, maybe a different brand, for the same cost as something like this. The difference being the size and the performance, the speed. Keep in mind that these mechanical drives can be affected if you drop them or if there's an impact of some kind. Um, physically, you know, there's inside a read-write head that's moving constantly, and these can fail if you're not nice to them. There's no moving parts in this one, so you really only have to pay attention to things like, you know, water damage, stuff like that. So, let's grab my MacBook and show you what this is capable of doing. On the screen, we have the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. This will test our performance for the internal and external drives. So we'll do a baseline here for my, uh, this is the brand new MacBook Pro 16. So it's got an extremely fast internal NVMe drive, like sort of like the one that we were looking at. There's differences, but for, uh, for the purpose of this, it's similar. So we're gonna run this speed test here and you see that it just screams write speed almost 3000 megabytes read speed 2700 so it looks like that's sort of our baseline here so this is the macbook pro internal hard drive itself so we'll stop this next up we are going to do let's do the mechanical hard drive so we'll do the toshiba um, I have a special cable that lets me plug it into this laptop. It doesn't have the USB-A flat connector, but it will still operate at the same limitation. So we will plug that in and wait for it to initialize. All right, we don't want to use this as a backup disk, and it's connected. So we will go into the options and select our target drive. And we are going to choose the Toshiba. and it is apparently formatted as NTFS. It is NTFS. So I'm going to go grab another drive that um, I can actually benchmark. It will be similar to this one anyway, um, but uh, be right back. Okay, we are back with another external drive. Uh, same kind of thing. Um, I think this one's a terabyte and a half but again it uses the same interface so it'll have the same restrictions and it will perform similarly it's a Toshiba as well so it probably even has the same series of drive inside but anyway um, you know originally I had planned on using this drive for the uh, for the video and for the testing but I thought that the silver one might show up better on camera and apparently that was a bad choice. So let's try plugging this one in. This one has been used on my other MacBook Pro, so it should work just fine. Now the NVMe drive that we just assembled, I'll probably have to format first. So um, I may not do that on camera. So we have the drive connected. We will select the target drive again. We'll choose the volume. All right, so now it's happy. So the first test that you saw was the internal super fast SSD. This is the external uh, mechanical drive 
using the USB 3.0 interface and look at the difference in performance. So we're looking at 57 megs a second for write speed, 62 for read, and that'll fluctuate a little bit, plus or minus. But this is the kind of limitation that you have using the USB 3.0 interface with a mechanical drive. And this is one of the reasons that we're doing what we're doing today. I'm going to go ahead and stop this, and we'll eject that drive. Okay, just for fun, we will benchmark the flash drive as well. So we'll do this one here. So the first benchmark was internal drive. Second was the mechanical drive. Now we will do the flash drive. So again, look at the speeds here for the mechanical drive, 58, 63. We'll select our target drive flash drive and like I said these aren't known for being speed demons you're dealing with a much slower memory to begin with um, even though this is a flash drive versus a mechanical drive the mechanical drive is capable of um, more performance for the write where you can see that this drive is optimized for read at 163, which is a couple of times, two and a half times faster than the mechanical drive. And again, this is using the USB 3.0 interface, so it is capped at um, 5 gigs to begin with, but again, we're dealing with the limitation of the memory in the stick itself. So we'll go ahead and stop that. And I did not eject it properly. So last up is the drive that we just assembled, and We'll probably have to initialize it. I'm guessing that it has not been. Just a quick explanation also on the silver drive when it was talking about uh, being formatted NTFS. NTFS is a file system used on Windows machines that is not compatible with Macs out of the box. So we've plugged in the new drive and it does in fact need to be initialized. All right. So we will call this the SSD and I'm only going to be using this on my Apple devices so I'm going to leave this as Mac OS formatted. We're not going to use it for backups at this time. And it is done. So, we now have a terabyte volume. And if we get the information on it, you can see that it is 999 gigabytes. So now that we have it formatted, let's select it as the target drive for our benchmarks. And see what this puppy will do. And right off the bat, you see just how much faster this drive is than either of the other ones that we were testing. So we are getting consistent, almost 1,000 megabyte per second transfer rates, both for reading and writing. The reason that I did this the way that I did is I knew from my review or from my my uh, my research that this case was capable of extremely high transfer rates over the uh, of the 3.1 interface now some of the other drives that you buy off the shelf uh, most of them actually um, using the uh, 10 gigabit per second interface will only reach in the 600s sometimes even less but 600 megabytes per second is pretty common. That's the reason that I went with the enclosure that I did and the drive that I did. The drive is capable of much higher speeds than that 
if it were plugged directly into a computer. But again, I didn't want the interface to be, um, or the drive to be the limiting factor. I wanted the interface to get, you know, basically maxed as much as possible. So there you have it. This is the Fideco or Fideco um, M.2 NVMe enclosure. You buy this separately. I'll link these uh, in the description below and just kind of show you what I'm working with here and um, so you can see it for yourself. But you know, this it's uh, an aluminum case. It's very durable. It's very lightweight. And I think that um, this is going to work out really well for me as an external device and something that I can use on all of my devices. I use my iPad, uh, the iPad Pro for video editing. And so this will plug directly into it. I could do some file transfers off of the laptop, plug it into the iPad and pull them off of that at a much faster transfer rate than anything else that I've been using up to this point. So with that, I'm going to cut it off. If you have any questions, uh, specific questions about the technology or the choices that I've made, or if you don't agree with the choices that I've made, um, leave those in the comments below. I'm happy to address them in as real time as possible. I try to stay on top of my comments. But yeah, if you have any questions, um, just let me know what you, what you want to know, and we can go into more specifics uh, if we need to. So with that, I hope you have a great day. I am uh, preparing for Thanksgiving. We're going to be going to California to visit family, so that'll be nice. And uh, yeah, so I hope everyone has a wonderful Thanksgiving. Stay safe. Don't fight with the family. And until next time, have a great day.